everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a video talking about something that I've been wanting to talk about on my channel for ages really and I've just never really got around to talking about it and that is talking about guide dog access denials. You guys probably know if you follow me on Twitter or my Facebook that I'm very passionate about this anyway. I have recently worked with Channel 4 on a series of short films for their No Go Britain series in which I reported on a feature talking about the amount of guide dog and assistance dog access denials that occur in Britain and I also wrote an article recently for the Huffington Post UK on access denials. And in May, I joined a hundred other guide dog owners to go to Parliament to lobby MPs to look at the issue of access denials and that guide dog access denials are a prominent issue for a lot of guide dog owners. So today I thought I would make a video talking about my experiences of access denials and also ways that if you're a new guide dog owner that you can deal with an access denial. Now, what I want to say before I get into this video is please don't think that if I talk about my access denials that you will get an access denial if you're a new guide dog owner or if you're thinking about having a guide dog because it's very much a case of potluck. You could go the entirety of your time with the guide dog and never have an access denial. You might only have one access denial, you might have two. You could be might like me and have quite a large number of them under your belt. You know, you can't exactly say how many you're gonna get and that shouldn't stop you from having a guide dog because guide dogs are amazing. You know, all assistance dogs, they're incredible dogs. They give you so much independence. You can't let an access to null ruin your life or rule your life. You have to just get yourself up, dust yourself off and move on and just try and overcome it in whatever way you can. That being said, I am very much aware that access denials, when they occur, they're very horrible situations to be in. They can feel very stressful. And today I wanted to talk about how you can deal with them because I've been a guide dog owner now for about four years. So I am quite experienced and I do feel that I've got some right to talk about this issue because I had quite a number of access denials where I live and I thought that this might help you in some way, shape or form. Plus the fact that I've also talked to a lot of other guide dog owners because of the fact that I'm a journalist and because of the fact I've worked with Channel 4 on their No Go Britain series, I do know quite a bit about this issue and I thought I would talk about it today. I've had this happen when I've been out with my friends, I've been out with family members, I've been out on my own. It's happened to me when I've got into cabs and private hire vehicles. I've had it on two separate occasions on buses. I've had it in restaurants, I've had it in chain stores, I've had it just in my local kind of convenience stores and that kind of thing. It's, it varies on day to day. I mean, I can go a whole month and never have a, a access to now. I can have two in a week. I could have none for a very long time. You can't exactly say how it's gonna happen and when it's gonna happen, but I have had it happen to me quite a few times in the past. Now, the reason that people try to refuse me access because I have a guide dog varies. So sometimes it's because the people believe that guide dogs are unclean or they're unhygienic. People can be afraid of dogs. They don't know what a guide dog is. They don't know what they're there for. They don't know about company policy and they just don't know the law in general. And sometimes people do know the law, but they just want to be obstinate and they don't want to let you in because you have a guide dog regardless of the fact what the law says it can be for a number of different reasons really it, it's, it's difficult to say but it's a, a, a variety of different reasons I get the most common one I get I think is that guide dogs are unclean and that they're afraid of dogs those are the two most common ones I hear when I have an access to now so I want to just talk a little bit about the misconception that guide dogs slash assistance dogs are unclean and unhygienic now of course assistance dogs guide dogs they're all very well taken care of of medically they go for regular vet checks they, they have their regular booster vaccinations done they have their regular fleeing and worming done like any other dog would and they're trained not to mess in public places i mean if a dog's unwell for example they might vomit in a place or something like that but to be honest as a guide dog owner myself and someone who knows a lot of guide dog owners if a guide dog is unwell we wouldn't bring that dog out for fear that that would happen we would try and keep the dog home to stop that from happening i wouldn't bring her out anyway even if she was sick i would not bring her out for both her welfare and the public's welfare i would keep her home anyway guide dogs are very clean they're very hygienic they're very well trained and they will not mess or dirty an area in any way and they're trained so that there won't be a hazard to the public health and public welfare 
when an access denial does occur, I mean, I can sometimes feel very angry, very frustrated, very upset. I felt in the past like a second class citizen. I felt like I don't matter. It can make you feel very humiliated. It's very uncomfortable to be in that situation. You know, you go out with your friends, you're going out to have dinner and then you turn up to a restaurant and they say, no, you can't enter this place because you have a guide dog. It's not a nice situation to be in. It can be very embarrassing more than anything else. And at the end of the day, I want to live an everyday life like anybody else. I want to be able to do the things that my friends are doing. I want to be able to go and get on a bus to go to work. I want to be able to order a cab and just go off and do whatever I need to do. I want to be able to go and post some parcels for eBay. You know, that's just my life. And the fact of the matter is, is that people need to understand is that behind these guide dogs, behind these assistance dogs, are everyday people. And they've got to do everyday things like anybody else. And when an access to no occurs, that liberty and that freedom that you're entitled to when you have this dog is taken away from you. We are everyday people. We matter as well. And that even though we have these dogs, we still have a life. In a recent survey conducted by Guide Dogs, a shocking 75% of assistance dog owners have reported that they at some stage have been refused access to a place on the grounds that they work with a dog. So there clearly is a big problem, not just had by Guide Dog owners, but by all assistance dogs and by all accounts. I'm now going to talk to you a little bit about some of my tips for how to handle this if you're a new time Guide Dog owner, or maybe you've just never had an access denial before and you're worried about having one. I'm sure some of you Guide Dog owners who are watching this are very experienced in what I'm going to say and in which case I do apologize if I'm going over old ground but for those newbies who've not got a guide dog yet or are thinking about getting a guide dog I just want you to have the full knowledge of this and to be aware how to treat the situation if it happens because if you've never been in it before it can be a very stressful situation and it's very difficult if you don't know how to handle it and I've had many experiences to get this right the first thing is to stay calm and collected. What you do not want to be doing in this situation is becoming angry, becoming antisocial. I am, of course, aware that this is a very horrible situation to be in. You can sometimes let your emotions get in front of you and you can feel very angry and frustrated. And I'm very much aware of that and I do 100% relate to that and I can totally understand that. But what you do not want to be doing is you do not want to appear obstinate. You do not want to give the people who are refusing you access any grounds to refuse you because they say you're antisocial. So stay calm and collected so that you're able to articulate yourself. The next thing to remember to do is to know the law. I think more often than not, what can happen is you can be in a situation and you can say, you can't do this, you can't do this, but you need to tell them why they can't do it. And the reason that they can't do it is because there's a law there designed to protect you. Under the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995 and the Equalities Act of 2010, it makes it illegal for service providers to refuse you access to a place on the grounds that you work with a guide dog or an assistance dog. You have to remember to say that to them because if you don't, they might not allow you access because they're not aware of the laws. So the important thing to do in this situation is to first of all, before you go any further, is to tell them of the laws that are designed to protect you and to inform them why it's an illegal offence to refuse you access because you have a guide dog or an assistance dog. So remember the laws. Equalities Act of 2010 or the Disability Discrimination Act or the DDA as it's better known of 1995. So with regards to taxis, cabs and private hire vehicles and access denials and taking guide dog owners, the only time that legally they are allowed to refuse you access is if they have something called a medical exam certificate and this is usually provided by their doctor I mean it's very rarely given but in some situations it is given and in this case they present you with it and they, they tell you they are medically exempt from taking you because they are allergic for example in which case that is fine and that is legally allowed also for guide dog owners you will be given this which is a little guide dog owner identification card pack now it will have a few different things in it but the thing you need to show to these people is this so this is what it says it says Guide dogs and other assistance dogs should be allowed entry into restaurants, food shops and other food premises. Their very special training means that they are unlikely to be a risk to hygiene in these premises. So that's what you get with your card pack. But also, another thing I want to point out to you, if you're a guide dog owner, you probably have already been sent this by the guide dogs campaigns team. And this is a little card and it says, by law, guide dogs and other assistance dogs must be allowed to accompany their owners into taxi shops, restaurants and other places open to the public. And then on the back it says about the Accessible Areas campaign. And it also says on the back here, 
For more information, see the Equality Act 2010, England, Wales and Scotland, and the Disability Discrimination Act 1995, Northern Ireland. So, this, if you've been sent one of these, you must show this when you're having an access denial, because this clearly states that the law is designed to protect you as a guide to and that this is an illegal offence. If it's in black and white, you're clearly showing them this, and it's, it's there in black and white that the law is there to protect you. So try to show them this before you go any further and remind them of the laws in place to protect you. The next thing to do in this situation is to further this by explaining what a guide dog or an assistance dog is and what they do for you. So for example, if you refuse access and you say, look, the law is in place to protect me, it's illegal for you to refuse me access because I have a guide dog or you're potentially breaking the law if you do this. Then go on to say something like, this is my guide dog, she is here to help me to get around and mobilise independently because of the fact that I have a visual impairment or if, for example if you have an assistance dog explain what that dog does for you and why it's there and why you need it and also d direct their attention to the identification so if your guide dog is wearing a harness say look this is my guide dog, she's wearing a harness, they all wear this and this is, this is to show that they're a guide dog and that they're not a normal dog. More often than not the thing is if they don't realise that guide dogs or assistance dogs are not normal dogs. They are exempt from the everyday rules that are in place for normal dogs to enter public places and public services. However, they don't realise that guide dogs and assistance dogs are exempt because they are not normal dogs. The next thing to do is if the person you're speaking to does not w want to consider this and they do not want to allow you access to the place, if they are not the manager, ask politely to speak to the manager and then tell them exactly what you've just said. If the manager is also in the same position and they're refusing to allow you access to this place because you have a guide dog or an assistance dog, there's no point trying to stay there and argue the case. However, there are a few things you should do before you leave the premises. Before you leave, you should ask them for their name and their identification, i.e. if they're a manager or a supervisor or a customer care staff, so that you know when you're reporting this. It would be nice not to have to report it, but in a lot of cases you do. Although, please stress to them that as a guide dog owner or an assistance dog owner, you are obliged to take this further and report it to whatever authority you are under. For guide dog owners like myself, it will, you will report it to your local mobility team and your engagement officer so that they can take it further for you. However, if it's something like a taxi or a cab, you can take it to your local licensing authority in your council and they can take it further. If it's a big franchise, for example, you could take it to the customer care team and inform them of this. You usually get a very good response to this, I've, ha I've found, if, you, if it's a franchise. I have had many examples of this and when I've reported it to customer care and explained the situation, they've been very apologetic and the issue has been resolved. But ideally, the most important people you want to get in touch with is who represents you as an organisation, i.e. guide dogs, or if you've got an assistance dog, whatever charity represents you and whoever you need to. They should be involved in the communication with everything. You can, of course, include other people, but do tell them because they need to know both so they can support you, but also so they can make a record of it when they are looking into studies of access denials. It's very important that you tell them. Also record things like what the time of day it is, where you are, where the access denial has, has occurred. If you're unable to see these details, if you've got a visual impairment, try and ask for a witness, someone in the general public who will vouch for you that this has happened and you can take down details, for example, like a number plate, if it's a public hire vehicle or a cab, if it's a shop, what the address is and what the name of it is and what time of day it is. Just try and get down as many details as you possibly can so that when you're taking this further, you can record all this and give them as much information so that they can look into this further for you. The next thing I would advise you to do is actually before you actually get to the place. So for example, if you're able to book in advance for things like taxis, private hire vehicles, restaurants, hotel bookings, anything that you can book in advance, anything at all, I would highly recommend that you inform them that you have a guide dog or an assistance dog so that they are aware of this so they can make prior arrangements before you get there. You don't have to of course, you're not legally bound to tell them you have an assistance dog or a guide dog, but as common courtesy, I myself and lots of other guide dog owners do this, we tell them that we have a guide dog so that they can make arrangements, but also if they do try to refuse your access because you have a guide dog, you can tell them then and there that you did inform them before you made the booking, so they should have been aware that you had a guide dog so that they could have made, made arrangements and that they were fully aware of this. It just makes it easier and just saves a lot of time and hassle and it also just backs you up further because I have had many situations where before I knew this I would book a cab, I wouldn't tell them I had a guide dog and they would arrive and say we can't accept you because we didn't know you had a guide dog and I don't take dogs. 
be sure to see it through. The most important thing is, is that you get some form of justice in whatever way you think it suits you. As a guide owner, I myself want to ensure that this doesn't happen to anybody else. So I always see it through. Whether you think an apology is fit, whether you think that some kind of re recompense is fit, whether you think some training is needed by the company to that local store, whatever you think is a good form of justice and recompense and apology, see it through until you get that and until you personally are happy and you as a guide or owner feel comfortable to go back into that premises and able to get on with your life without fear of an access denial. So just see it through until you feel comfortable at, personally and also when the engagement officers feel it's, feel it's a good situation. But the most important thing is that you should be able to go and live your life the way you want to. And to see it through until that point is very important. I always make sure that I get some form of apology and some form of confirmation that they are aware of this, that they have made a record of it and that it will not happen again. For example, I once reported an issue that happened to me with an access denial in a local ch coffee chain. I'm not going to say the name for legal reasons. And what happened is I reported it to both my engagement officer at my local district team and also reported it to the company itself. I got an apology in letter form and I also was informed that they had made the area manager aware of this and that they had made a case number for this and if it happened again they would take it further. It didn't happen again and I've never had an issue with that company since. The next thing is don't let it stop you from being confident. Do not let an access denial stop you from living your life. Still go out and do the things you want to do. And of course, I am fully aware there are days where it makes you feel totally unrepresented. It makes you feel like you don't count as a person. But you just have to dust yourself off, rise above it and think to yourself, no, I'm going to carry on with this and I'm going to see this through and I'm going to live my life in the way I want to because I have got this guide dog for a reason so that I can go out and live my life and I'm going to continue to do that and that's just what you have to remember. If you don't get the response you want, you can of course take it further. You can write to your local MP, you could go to the press if it's a certain issue, you could continue to take it further with, for legal proceedings, you could continue to take it further with the company, you could put it on social media, however I would just be careful with social media because sometimes with social media it can back, backfire a little bit. Just be aware that you might get a backlash on social media of that. Nine times out of ten you get a very good support on social media and you get a very good response to it. But just be aware that sometimes social media can be a bit of a hindrance and sometimes when you do report an access denial and you put it on social media, sometimes you might get the odd troll here and there. But as a whole you get a very good response and you usually do get the outcome you want. But do know your boundaries, do know the facts and the laws that are around you, do have all the information that you have, do make sure that you listen to what the people are saying who are giving you the access to know, their reasonings behind why they've denied you access, make sure that you tell them of the laws that are in place to support you, make sure that you say that you're potentially breaking the law, just make sure that you cover yourself in every way possible, make sure that you explain what a guide dog is and what they're there for and the fact that there is a law to protect you and just make sure that when you're in a situation you give as much information as possible and if they still don't let you in because you have a guide dog or an assistance dog in that case make sure that you listen to their reasoning behind it get some evidence get a, a witness what the important thing is with with access denials is that you know as much as you possibly can do and that you don't go making any big proclamations you just stick to what you know the important thing is to stay calm that is the most important thing do not lose your head I am fully aware that you, you that there are situations where you really want to get angry and you get do get upset and I'm not gonna sit here and say that I haven't done that because I have I have got upset I have got angry but from experience, it's better to stay calm and it's better to explain the situation and the laws surrounding guide dogs and what a guide dog does and why they shouldn't do it because you do get a better response when you remain level-headed. That is that for this video today, guys. If you want to find out any more information about access to Niles, guide dogs are currently running a campaign called the Access All Areas campaign and it gives you more information about this and the laws surrounding guide dogs and assistance dogs and our rights as guide dog owners and assistance dog owners so do go and check that out i'll leave it in the description box below i will also link the video i did with channel 4 and i'll also link the blog post i wrote for the huffington post uk and you can check those out if you want to do let me know in the comments if you've got any of your own thoughts or opinions on this matter if you've got any questions do feel free to ask me and i will try and help you as best i can don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're new to my channel as well and i will see you guys in my next one bye